Alrighty, holy cow, I feel like it's been forever. Hello everyone, welcome for downloading The Retro Gamers. <laughs> Larry here. And Anthony over here. Oh yeah, how you doing, Ant? Doing alright, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Um, it's been a little while since <laughs> since we chatted. <laughs> yeah, was, was, was I still in New York the last time we chatted? <laughs> Possibly, so that was... That was a long time ago at this point. Many moons, many moons. <laughs> and, um, you know, again, we're coming on here, you know, trust me, we know our topic is a little antiquated, but a lot of times what's old could be new again. Always. I mean, why not? I mean, the whole point of us being retro gamers is the fact that we like old stuff. Yeah, pretty much. And old is still becoming new, like just just mentioning it, you know, the new Zelda game coming out. Uh, for the Wii U, Crash Bandicoot's actually making a return to Skyrim, of all places, not even his own game. But, wow. um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the classics are still out there, and people still want them, but it's really the classics that it's all about. And we actually, right before we started recording, we were talking about what really constitutes a classic or a retro game, or even a retro console. And um, what were your thoughts on what you feel a retro, ret- what's considered a retro console? All right, so for for me, a retro console is, and I mean, I think it's still to me like sixty four bit and younger, uh, or, or or I should say older. I'm sorry, sixty four <laughs> bit and older is the way, yeah, not younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I feel like once we went, once we really went to the disc era, like PlayStation two and beyond, I think like to me, even though the graphics may be more. Um, May, may you know maybe more enhanced over the course of like PlayStation Three, Xbox One, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the gaming itself isn't like hasn't changed as much. Okay, so that's what makes me still feel like we're in that era. Whereas to me, like anything older, you know, like N sixty four and older, um, to me it felt like it was a different gaming, like just a different way of playing. Mm-hmm. So, so I don't feel like I don't feel like the PlayStation 2 Xbox versions have really moved into that category yet. Okay. But again, this, you know, I mean, I, I think it's ultimately, you know, an opinion thing. I was going to say, like, where, where one, do you stand? On one it? man's opinion. Um, I kind of feel, uh, I, I was mentioning before, I kind of feel that the, because the, the, the graphical difference between, even going up to Xbox One, uh, no, um, excuse me, the first Xbox, uh, and PS2, when they jumped to Xbox 360 and PS3, there's still a graphical difference. Uh, like pixelated, not pixelated, uh, Polygon kind of mm-hmm. got smoothed out and everything with 360 and PS3. But when it went from 3 to 4 or Xbox 360 to Xbox One, all right, yeah, it got a little bit crisper, but it wasn't a major difference between those two consoles. So to me, I feel like retro would go to Xbox One and PS2 because that was the last time we saw, in my opinion, a a graphical difference between the the old system and the next system coming in. And of course, when you say Xbox One, you mean the original. Xbox. I keep saying Xbox One. Yeah, that's why I mean the yeah, original. I keep saying Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, Xbox One is the, the first latest, Xbox. So try yeah. try and keep up with me. I'm gonna try to. Um, actually, Xbox One is no longer the latest, but that's besides the point. That's uh, very true. Now, yeah, now <laughs> now it's just yeah. There's something new. Yeah, I don't, yeah. VR. Everything's going VR. Everything's going virtual VR. reality. And- it yeah, was a retro. Uh, you know, Nintendo tried that many years ago with a retro console Listen, called Virtual Boy. Listen, I'm going to, you know, I, so well. I'm going to stand with the Virtual Boy. I don't care what anyone says. It was a great concept. It had some good games. All right, only 18 of them or something like that. But it was still a great concept because, you know, the guy got canned for it and the man invented the Game Boy. He so happened to invent the Virtual Boy, so he could not fall back on his on his prior success. Well, I, well, that's okay because then you had the Game Boy Advance and so on. So I yeah, mean, actually, I was just no, at. Um, think... Go ahead. No, I was going to say. Uh, speaking of the Game Boy, um, uh, when was it? I went uh, day before Memorial Day, Sunday. Um, I went to the city because Nintendo World they re- they redid it, they revamped it. So, and I had a train ticket that was going to expire anyway. So. I was I head out to the city, just walking around. I went to Nintendo World, where I got my pretty cool uh, Duck Hunt T-shirt. Uh, really good. I mean, I only went there, been there once before, but it was just kind of you know nice. Had a lot of cool stuff in there. But they had a a whole uh, 
setup of Game Boys from de- even to the Game and Watches all the way up to present day. And it was just really cool. interesting. I have a video on my YouTube, uh, on my Facebook. They put it on YouTube, I don't remember. Um, of all the different Game Boys and just the history of them. And I think I pretty much hit each one of them when they all came out. So, but it was pretty cool. That's Game really Boy. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, for me, I've always, like, like handheld has never worked out for me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it was. Um, maybe it's because I've had my bad eyesight since I was a kid and I just can't <laughs> stand the concept of playing a video game on such a tiny screen. Could be. True. In fact, I think the only handheld system I ever personally purchased was a Game Gear. <laughs> and the reason and the reason why I bought the Game Gear is because they had X Men games that weren't on the Genesis at yeah. the time. So and they were pretty damn good. But like honestly, like handheld games I never played until I started maybe downloading some of them on uh either on um the Wii mm-hmm. or the Wii U or, you know, getting them on GameCube when they were bringing it, you know, when they started, like, making them on there. I was going to say, did you ever own the um, the Super Game Boy or even that, that Super Game Boy Advance? Nope. Oh, no, you never had them? All right. No, I never had, I never had any, ha- like like I said, except for Game Gear, which I had for a brief period of time. Yeah. And I have an old, I have an original Game Boy somewhere that mm-hmm. I barely ever played, um, only because somebody gave it to me. I didn't mm-hmm. even buy it. But um, yeah, I, handhelds were always lost on me. I just couldn't. I couldn't rack my brain with why would I want to play a video game on a tiny little screen when I have a big TV? No, but that's what I'm saying. Like when when the super when the Super Game Boy came out for the Super Nintendo, where you can play the Game Boy games on the TV, that never interested you or anything like that. No, because for me, I always like it. Always felt like the the games weren't like, or especially when you go back to the original Game Boy, where like it wasn't even in color. You know, mm. it always it always it always felt a little inferior to an actual like. You know, Nintendo game or Super Nintendo game, okay. and especially when you know when 16-bit came along, and you saw how awesome like the Genesis and Super Nintendo games were. For me, like even at that point, like I felt Game Boy was a little hat. Not saying it was a bad system or anything. Like just that. not it your was choice. Like just yeah, it just kind of wasn't working. For no, me. fair enough. I I love the the Game Boys. You know, during the summers, uh, me and my family would go like to the beach club and everything. So obviously, we didn't have the system, so I got used to the Game Boys. Uh, my friends down there had the Game Boys, so we were linking them up. So I, I think, out of almost necessity, I became a real big fan of the Game Boy, and I think I own every iteration except for a couple of the DSs recently. So, um, but yeah, that's again. And, but like you mentioned, have you downloaded any of them on the Wii U console? Any of the like the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games? Or even DS games now you can download on it. I think I think I did. I think I, and I haven't played them yet because mm-hmm. life has been a little busy lately. <laughs> but um, I started downloading the Zelda games because mm-hmm. I know, like if there's one thing I know I missed out on on handheld, it, it would be the Zelda games. And I'm you know I'm pretty much a big Zelda fanatic. Yeah. So to skip out on any games that are you know similar to A Link to the Past because a lot of the graphics I see from those are kind of they kind of follow that format yeah. like minish cap and minish cap i recommend know. that game yeah was fantastic. everybody tells me minish cap is amazing so it's like all of those games now that i can you know download them on a wii U console and play them on my big screen it's like i'm all in for those that's I just cool find a little bit of time to do it either. they even uh, they're starting to bring in the um some of the castlevania um game boy advance games uh, oh, those awesome. are really good because they play like not as good. Nothing's as good as uh, Symphony of the Night, Symphony but they play the Night. like Symphony of the Night. So definitely try and check those out when you get a chance. Yeah, Symphony of the Night was probably one of my Symphony favorite, was awesome. favorite games. They yeah. just actually just... Um, I know we've had a conversation before of uh, having the original games with the original consoles versus playing the, the, um, the, uh, the, the virtual consoles. But with the backward compatibility of the, uh, the Xbox One... Symphony of the Night on 360 became available on one, and oh, awesome. um, and I just kind of I started picking it up again a little bit. And uh, what's cool about it now on Xbox One, I can actually try and broadcast it on the Twitch or YouTube or something like that. But be that as it may, it, I've been getting into Symphony of the Night again, and you just you forget, which is good in my opinion. You forget how good it is, and it's almost you forget how to play it, which mm. gives you that nostalgic feel of when you first started playing the game, and you had no idea how to play it. Yeah, which is great. It's like that's with any retro game, though. It's like you know, if you if you let enough time go by um, without playing it, the, you know, when you get back in, it's like it's familiar to you because you remember playing it, but you don't remember all the pe- you know all exactly. the pieces. It's like you know, when I go back and play the original Legend of Zelda, I can fly <laughs> through that like first quest in an, under an hour mm-hmm. because I've played it so many times. But 
get me to sit down and play the second quest, which I probably beat maybe twice. And, you know, there's so much time in between. It's like I forget it all and I got to do it all over again. I don't think I've ever actually played the second quest. Second not quest even is with awesome. The, not even with the code. Um, I don't know why. I just never... Just never. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go on record. I don't think I've ever beat Zelda, now that I think about it. I think I've gotten that far into it, but I just mm-hmm. never got enough to beat Ganon well, or, or get that far. I would say that surprises me, but I remember us having a conversation years ago about video games and how you you said that like almost all the video games you've ever purchased you've never beat <laughs> oh yeah no my my beating ratio is very very low so um not that it's saying that i never had fun with the games i just mm-hmm. i think my attention span to it never let me really stay with the game because as soon as i would get a new one the old one went to the wayside so no matter how good it was uh right, not that i was me- yeah, and for me, it's like as soon as I buy a game, it's like I don't care what I got to do. Come hell or high water, I want to beat it. Yeah, it's... Of course, now, you know, now I'm slowly beating, you know, I, I've definitely become more like you where I buy games with the intent to play them. Yeah, exactly. And then it's hard for me to find the time to actually do it. In fact, I just started three months ago. Batman Arkham Asylum. Oh, really? Uh, And they're re-releasing them, too. (laughs) Yeah, I bought that one in Arkham City because I'm like, all right, I'm going to play these because everybody talked about how great they are. I'm like, I played Arkham Asylum. I think I sat down twice and played it. (laughs) And that that was honestly the last time I played my console. (laughs) And it was on my 360. I I bought an Xbox One in March um, for work reasons, actually. And all the game, I have three games. One is shrink wrapped. One is a free download. I haven't downloaded <coughs> yet. And the other one I opened, uh, and it's sitting inside the console, and I haven't played it. <laughs> well, that's the same. I bought an Xbox One for really that rare retro, the rare replay, the thirty. Yeah, that's the one game. that I have shrink wrapped. Yeah. Oh, and it's because only because of Battle Toads. That was the only reason. I think I played Battle Toads twice. You mean the most impossible game in the world? Oh, please don't even get me started. And. Um, and then I stopped playing the system up until recently when I started playing The Division, uh, which for newer games is absolutely fantastic. That's the first game in a long time where, like, I'm trying to beat it. But, um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, yeah, my, 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 I'm trying to, even as we speak, I can probably count on my hand on just a few games. Um, I did, but I think the last time on like Super Nintendo where I was like that where I bought the game and I was hell bent on finishing it was probably mm-hmm. Link to the Past and then on N64 yes. actually would have been um, Ocarina of Time yes bo- and so. both both worth the work too oh totally those, totally those games are amazing totally. well maybe uh, maybe our next topic of discussion can be you know games that uh Games that we actually have beaten. Yeah, honestly, you're right. Well, that's going to be a short one. Cause <laughs> well, for you, for you, maybe. Well, here, real quick, what's the first game you ever beat? First game I ever beat was Super Mario Brothers. Oh, okay. Mine was Contra. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure uh, it was with, with, it was yeah, with the yeah, Konami with the code, code, no doubt. Yeah, I was going to say with the code, of That's course. all right. I was, I was eight, I think. Maybe yeah. Ten. No, I think the first <laughs> game I ever beat was Super Mario Brothers. Followed by, well, actually, no. Am I lying? I may be lying because the first system I actually had was an Atari 2600. Ooh. Um, but Those games ever really you know, beatable? The, I mean, there's only a few. Yeah, games I was just that... to say, like, there were very few games on there you actually beat. Like, I think, I think the only ones I can think of that actually you could beat were like Adventure, yeah. or Haunted House, which were like the, <laughs> considered the first RPGs in a mm-hmm. way, or even ET, um, or ET, which I never beat and never understood and never <laughs> will. Um, but if you watch a YouTube video, you can beat the game in about five minutes. Oh yeah, totally. I have the cartridge. It's sitting there, but I don't have a system for it. But I think uh, I remember what... I have two copies. Do you really? Yeah, nice. I have two copies somewhere. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so... Actually, now that I think about it, then Atari 2600, I didn't beat anything. Because I know for a fact I never beat Adventure or Haunted House. So I'll stick with Super Mario Brothers as my first game that I beat. Fair enough. No problem. Good one and a best one. Have you been playing Mario Maker? I haven't even purchased Mario Maker oh, I thought yet. you did. Oh, no, I want it... Yeah, again... Wanted to buy it. Yeah. Haven't had time. All right. Um, I just... Because that's got know. a good feel, too. I mean, it's... it's You know, people... They're, it's almost like homebrews. They're all homebrew games. Legally mm-hmm. allowed by Nintendo. Uh, but it definitely has that real old school feel on, on a lot of the levels that are Well, and that's what I like. It's like, you know... That, that, that's the amazing thing about Nintendo. It's like, you know, they realize they're a bit of a market for retro gamers now. Um, now that, you know... 
we're in it, you know, we've gotten to the point where the Nintendo generation, they're all grown up, they're all, you know, either, you know, getting married or having kids, or they've been following the consoles all the way through the years. Mm-hmm. Um, they're recognizing that, and they're trying to, you know, keep that, you know, keep that consumer yeah. by trying to go back into the well. I mean, they're notorious for it. That's why, you know, in terms <clears throat> of, in terms of video game history, you know, they have more, they have more, um, which we call they have more franchises that are evergreen than any other system. And granted, they've been around a little bit longer, you know, longer mm-hmm. than everybody mm-hmm. else. But still, you know, the fact that everybody know, you know, every gamer knows, like, you know, Super Mario Bros. has been around for over thirty years. Legend of Zelda has been around for thirty years. You know, Mega Man. I mean, there are so many systems. You know, so many and, and just the console have. itself. That that yeah, that just, design. Yeah. The the, you the, know, the they, controller. They, 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 they keep it. They keep it simple and straightforward. It's like you know, they make games for gamers. Oh, totally. And the fact that they continue to appeal to the retro gamers, I think, is just you know, is amazing. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going on with their business model because <laughs> Wii U wasn't exactly the most successful system no. for them. It's not stopping them from making a new one. No, and Nintendo. didn't they announce the new one at E3? Um, you know, they don't have like an actual stage show like they used to. Um, so I haven't heard any. I haven't read anything specifically about. It. I think it's called uh, NX or something like that. Or oh, at least mm-hmm. the the, uh, the the whatever title. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, I thought they gave it. it may have given it. Maybe they gave it an official title. I don't know. E3's no, still you know ending today. Well, it, they certainly didn't debut the console or anything like that. There okay. may just be some talk about it. The biggest thing they talked about was the new Legend of Zelda, which I gotta say, just real quick to bring it up to to modern times. The new Zelda name, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I don't know, something about that name I find just one of the... Pornographic? B- no, I was going to say one of the better titles for a Zelda game. Maj- uh, just uh, going on title alone, not gameplay. Like Majora's I know, Mask, to me, like, I mean, come like on. Breath of the Wild, of what, the is wild. wild what does wild breath well, mean to people? Because in Twilight Princess, he was a wolf or something, right? So right. now it's a it's a really it's an open world, um, and if you have the amiibo from Twilight Princess, you can bring Wolf Link into uh, Breath of the Wild, and he's he's almost uh, like a second player. But I don't, I don't know. Just, I, don't know I don't know artsy. if I want any anybody wild breathing on me. So, <laughs> well, I thought it was Artsy, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> of course, you did. <laughs> um, uh, if I don't know if anyone's aware, um, you know, it's let's pull the curtain back a little bit. I'm here in New York. You're in California. Um, I am. Even as we speak, do you, have you seen any um, uh, uh, like retro um, conventions or anything in your area? I got one out here coming up in August. No, to be honest with you, I haven't. But um, I need to start looking for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, I've been looking for more retro stores. Um, what was the name of that store where you used to live? Game whatever. Dude. That place was packed. Game Dude is by <laughs> far like the best Holy retro cow. store I've ever been to. It's a ama- it's it's a Costco for retro mm. games, basically. It was just as big as a Costco. When I say packed, not with customers, there were people there, but jam packed with games. Yeah, I mean, and they literally have every system going back. Yeah, see. They so. have. <laughs> they had. They were the, one of the few system places where I found that um, Sega CDX, the hybrid yep. Genesis and Sega CD, which I'm still wish I owned to this day, but I just never did. Um, Do you remember how much it was going for originally or then? No, no, at Game. Oh. Day. Yeah, like two hundred. No, maybe three hundred dollars or something. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I'm always. I'm always. I'm always marvelled by the. Um, Neo Geo system. <laughs> Neo Geo. They were like a thousand dollars brand new back then. Yeah, and the game two hundred and fifty bucks for the honestly. Games. It was insane. <laughs> it was absolutely insane. It was like who would have bought that? I'm still lamenting the fact that I never owned the Sega Saturn just for the fact that I didn't get a chance to play Shining Force 3. Ah, I was ju- as soon as you said Saturn, that was the game that popped in my head. Suppose yep. That is the the quintessential role-playing game, supposedly, of all time. And Shining Force 1, in my opinion, of One games of I've played, is the best RPG I've played. I loved yeah. it. Yeah, no, 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 there's no question about and it. And I, I mean- beat it. I've beaten it. <laughs> Yo, you beat it? I did beat Shining Force. The original one, too. And, and, yep. and the remake, but be that as it may. I, um. I also beat the first one, and then I got... I think I got like three quarters of the way through the second I one, got, yeah. and then my my save it crashed. My save disappeared, <laughs> and I, I've restarted it many times, but never went, never actually went all the way and finished it. In fact, I I think I have it on um, 
Xbox 360. There's that Sega Classics. I was going to say, there was a compilation, uh, yeah. which I have on PS3 that has it. Yeah, so I have it there. It's waiting for me, and I'll get back to it eventually. <laughs> to me, it was the only. It was the only. It was the only um, RPG that like allowed you to control like twelve people in battle. That's so what I loved like, about it. it. Felt, yeah, it felt like you actually were commanding a little bit, like a, a mini army. Yes. Um, whereas every other system, it's like, oh, you have to pick three guys, and the other people have to sit out. And I'm like, well, I want to play all of them. No, you're exactly right. That turn base. Yeah. Of the I love, and that's when. Final Fantasy... Oh, what the hell was the name of that? They had the same gameplay. Tactics? Final, yes, that. When that came out, I started playing that. I mean, Final Fantasy is good and all, but... Well, I mean, it's a great series. I never series, played Tactics. But I enjoyed Tactics a lot because it played like Shining Force. Mm. I have a feeling I might be playing Shining Force 2 tonight now. <laughs> I might as well take advantage of it while I actually have a free evening. <laughs> I, th- I, wonder, I think that... Um, that combination disc may have also had Shining in the Darkness, which was the yes. Game Gear version. No, yes, no, it no, no, wasn't no. the it Game was Gear the version. Original. Yes, you're right. It was it was before it was, Shining Force. Right, and yeah. it, I remember trying it, but um, it, I didn't find it very appealing, only because it was like for, it was first person. It was text it was, based. Yeah, it was first person yeah. text based, and you were going through like a maze at yeah. least to start. And um, I was never fond of those types of games. I didn't mind those. Uh, so, it depends like, on what yeah, it is. But, Right, but Shining Force One just like yeah, was, liter- literally blew my mind. In fact, I have I actually have it on Genesis. I still have the oh, yeah. <laughs> I have it with the box, and then I also have Shining Force Two, just the cartridge. There you go. Yeah, games I love, I have no problem like spending money and having you know to buy the originals. You know what it was that I, I actually downloaded Virtual Console. There was there was a, a Game Gear Shining Force. I forgot the name of it um, that I downloaded on the uh, the 3DS. Mm. I started playing, but now I'll probably play that before I go to sleep. And you know um, what you need to download? You need to download the um, the Legend of Zelda games that were on CDI. No, I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, oh my God! What were the names of those? Those were the. Um, oh God! They I don't even know. But it is they the were, only. They were they were, wor- they were worse than the cartoon. There were two of them. <laughs> it's a cartoon. What? <laughs> well, um. What do you I, excuse me or something like that? What did you say? Excuse me, Prince. That's what it was. Yes. <laughs> Poor Captain Lou running around. For, I worked for the company that made that. Yeah. What a shit. I have it on DVD somewhere. Well, um, I, know I gave it to you. <laughs> the um, the company I worked yeah, for. that's true. Thank you, Deke. Um, the uh, the Zelda. It's funny how CDI is the only system that actually had a true Zelda game starring Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. It's 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 really weird, right? Oh my god! And they made some Zelda. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, Zelda made her way over to like Super Smash Brothers. Eventually. Well, yeah, yeah, but but, but it, it wasn't her own game. It's almost like Nintendo signed the deal with CDI. Who was that? Philips or no? It was Sony? No, who was it? Well, whoever made CDI, um, Nintendo franchised out their 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 characters because they also did Mario, a few Mario mm-hmm. games on that. But almost like Nintendo went, you know what? We're going to purposely give them crappy games so that way they don't get better than our home games. Because there was a Mario Mario Hotel game that is ju- just god awful, horrible. Um, it's even hard to describe. Oh, I remember that game. Yeah. Yes, I remember hearing about that game. And I never played these games. I'm going to be honest with you. I saw these games watching... I'll give him a shout-out. The Angry Video Game Nerd. He did a, he did a series with the CDI and these horrible Mario Love and Zelda that guy. Games. Super oh, he's the best. He's the best. But, um, yeah, no, CDI... I'm trying to think what the most obscure system I owned. Like oh, most obs- obscure? Well, obscure mm-hmm. meaning, like, not the top brands you know a lot not sony nintendo or or sega yeah like a third party system i guess i think i, think I always stuck to the yeah i, think like I, I always d- stuck to the the regulars i never had know? a turbo I never, graphic i never strayed never had a turbo graphic um like the, i mean i mean the oddest one i could probably well not the oddest one but the I mean, the strangest one I could probably think of would have been the Dreamcast, but that wasn't really strange. It just, it just was, it just well, died quickly, which was a shame because it was actually a great system. That had I that game got me through a few nights in college because of some of the games that were on there. So that was that was pretty Resident sweet. Evil Code Veronica. I played on that and mm. I loved it. Mm. And Nemesis, yes. Resident Evil Three, yes. What did I play? I played mostly like Crazy Tax. It was more um, like the arcade based games uh, that Simpsons looked just run. Like, oh god. Horrible game, but great. Um, that's, that was actually the one um, 
WWF Royal Rumble, it was the first time you had eight guys on a screen? Or was it six? Six, probably six. First time you had six guys on a screen, and back then that was revolutionary. Oh, yeah, forget about it. <laughs> better than, anything's better than four. So. Exactly. Unfortunately, they've never gotten past six. No, I guess it... Uh, mm, no. Oh, I thought one of them had eight. I don't know why. I could I be wrong. don't remember any of them having eight. I mean, even friggin' uh, WrestleFest only had six. <laughs> That's a game they got to bring back, or at least bring it at back. With download new, it, yeah. Get the new character. You know, you want to put new guys in, go right ahead. But well, you, know they, the, you know, they did, they did remake it for your phone. They did. They did. Um, not the same, but... It, yeah, kind of the same. So, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of as far. How do we as, get to this? How do we get to I, this conversation? This is the beauty of a podcast. You just let it run. I, we had something Amazing. in the beginning which I'm not going to remember anymore. Um, oh yeah, that's right. We were talking about what makes a console retro. Right, what makes a console <laughs> retro? And we've gone all over. The, we've gone from super retro to Xbox One. That's how that works. And we almost got a half hour of stuff. So that's how. That's the right, beauty so of this all whole two thing. People that are still listening to this. There you go. Yeah, they're, I'm they're getting, having a blast. We're getting some more people. You follow your, you know, your followers will also hit as well. Be tweeting this out, my friend. Yes, uh, yes, my my increasing popularity will definitely help. <laughs> I still have a oh man, I still got an original Genesis in my closet, which I just I hooked up to my TV once, but you know it's it's difficult to hook up the old systems to new TVs. Yes, it is. Way, and there's just a there's like half a millisecond of delay, which throws me off my game literally speaking so i just i can't even hook it up to my tv but i got a perfectly good genesis oh, well, just you know, sitting you in my closet easy easy way to fix that problem go to uh, salvation army and get a tube tv <laughs> <laughs> i've thought about it trust me <laughs> yeah i mean me i have um again i have every, going back to atari i have atari 2600 NES, Super NES, Genesis. I have the original Sega CD hooked up to the Genesis. Ooh, nice. Which one? Which uh, design? The the tray? The design that, that, where you had to put the whole Genesis on the left side of it. Oh, okay. So not the and one the on CD top where you put it on top. Right, and the CD was on the right? Yes. Okay, that's um, the one I had, yeah. And I still have, like, Sewer Shark, Sewer Night Shark. Trap. <laughs> Night um, Trap. I didn't have Night Trap. Rage, WWF Rage, oh, in, the Rage in the Cage. Come on now. Um, um, I think Sewer Shark was a packing game. I think that came with was. the Sega CD. It was a packing game, yeah. and it was the most annoying game uh, in the world. Six, Niner, Niner. Although, <laughs> although I will say, like nothing beats buy, uh, nothing beats playing the music video games. Oh, CNC Music Factory. Uh, it was CNC Music Factory, and then they had Criss Cross. Did they have Marky Mark as well? They also had Marky Mark and the Funky <laughs> Bunch. Yes. <laughs> They were they were terrible. They were terrible. Oh my god! You paid fifty dollars. You paid fifty dollars for a game where literally they just ran three screens and you just chose which clips you wanted to put. I was going to say, how did they even play? Because I know a lot of the Sega CD games was more just like you hit a button at the right time. There was a um. That's what that. That's what those were. They okay. gave you. They basically gave you three screens. One screen was the original music video, mm-hmm. and then the other two screens were just whatever footage they got rights to. And what would happen is you would press a button on the screen based on what footage you wanted in the video as the song was playing. Yeah. And so it was like you were editing together your own version of the music video, and then it would play back whatever you edited <laughs> together to, for the music video. It was it, it, it was stupid. <laughs> it was just stupid. <laughs> I was going to say, because it played, I think the, the one game I remember playing over and over again on Sega C was, I think it was called Road Rage? Road Rash? It looked like a car, Rash, an, anim, yes. an anime. And you had to hit the button at the right time, otherwise the car would just cream off like no, the side of the know, map or something. You know which one I still have? I have the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh my god. And that was the same thing. It was the it was the first five episodes of the show. <laughs> and basically, you're watching the episode, but you just have to press the arrow when it shows up on the screen <laughs> in time so the show would continue. <laughs> that game was much better on Super Nintendo. Why do I own all the games for companies that I wound up working for? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that weird? Because you're a I company also, man. You knew back then that eventually... I knew back then I was going to work for all these companies. I mean, really. You and would like, work it's for these weird. people. Um, I also have the uh, the Super Nintendo game of Power Rangers. And that remember, game rocked. Well, the game rocked, but I remember the day I bought it, I was so happy because 
I ordered it at my local video store that I was working at at the time because I was working, you know, <laughs> I was a loser. I forgot and, about that place. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I got 10% off for ordering Whoa, it. Oh, there you uh, go. So, you know, I got it for, back then that was awesome. I got it for 45 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Holy it was probably cow. Probably like a week's pay for me at the time. <laughs> um, bring it home. I play it for like half an hour and I beat the game and that was it. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that's all right. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> but uh, and I played it over and over again. <laughs> the the replay value, that's what it's all about. Well, all there about really wasn't value. a replay value. Oh, okay, I just wanted to get my then. money's worth. <laughs> so um Yeah, other than that, that's pretty much I think that's pretty much about it. I'm I'm planning on I mean, I got the division going on is really the only recent game I've been playing, but I got a lot of uh actually I downloaded um which I started playing, Nintendo released on the Virtual Console, the original Pokemon games, which I've never played before. I've never played a Pokemon... Yeah. Well, that's not true. I've never played the original Pokemon games, but I played Stadium on oh, okay. N64, and those games are awesome. Yeah. Those games are awesome. Um, and, oh, Pokemon Snap, which was uh, a very strangely yeah, entertaining you, game, and oh, I really? don't know why. No, no like, I actually, like, <clears throat> I remember, like, feeling guilty for playing it because it was like i found it so fun i've heard that because it, it, you just go around taking pictures you go yeah you go around taking yeah. pictures but for some odd reason there's some crazy appeal to like trying to get the right pictures and well you used to do kind of photography well you used to take pictures a lot back in the day i remember not well, I mean, not I'm, professional I'm, but you know what i mean like when no, we used to go no, to the no, shows I used to take and everything pictures and you know now of course i'm into filmmaking well yeah you know, you uh, know, one better yeah, pic- yeah pictures have always been my thing but i have no idea why that one was appealing. in fact it's very strange because if i look at my n64 collection mm-hmm. i think like a quarter of my games are wrestling games and then another quarter of my games are Pokemon games because I've got two Pokemon stadiums, Pokemon Snap, and Pokemon Puzzle League. Okay, Pokemon Puzzle League rules, which so, is also n- r- ridiculously addicting. It's Tetris too. That's what it is with yep. with uh, with a cover on it. So, yep, Pokemon Puzzle League. I can tell you right now, at college, in the in my dorm room even when i'm not in the room i'd be walking down the hall and everyone would be in that room for some reason pokemon puzzle league was just the <laughs> game to play in earl hall back in from 1998 to about 2000 and uh you just walking down the hall you just hear like because you had to pick three pokemon and all it was was just it was best three out of five that's really what it right. was but every time you cleared a line and everything you know you hear like squirtle pikachu you know they saw sh- <laughs> yep this probably explains why I really didn't have a girlfriend yeah. that much through college, but the game was fantastic. And, well, that's and just I one of the many reasons. I had friends, so. But um, you, did, you did. You had me, and that's also why I didn't. Have I a meant at college. <laughs> when I, I went to college, not my college. No, not your. No, hell no. <laughs> um, I went to too many colleges. <laughs> I went to one, and look where I'm at, and look what you're doing. So, who, who made the right choice? <laughs> well, it's still up for debate. <laughs> But, um, so yeah, so they released Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. Um, I ended up picking Blue, just it's my favorite color. Um, okay. And then I don't think Red and Blue weren't really much different, except probably for the, the Legend Pokemon or whatever, and Yellow was just a jazzed-up version of the first two. Um, but I started playing it, and, and again, I've never played them before, but I can definitely see the appeal back then of just, you know, trying to, well, catch them all. And yeah. um, even it holds up today, to be honest with you. Like, I look at the new well, ones, and I'm like, eh. But I don't know. To me, they were. To me, they always looked like a video game version of Tamagotchi. Oh, they totally and, were. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, and that's and that's what bugged me about it because, like, <clears throat> I guess even back then, I didn't see the appeal of I got like I'm playing. I have to play this video game like well, at least with Tamagotchi. It's like I got to play this thing like 24 hours a day just to make sure it like stays alive. <laughs> it, it was well, so weird to me. It wasn't as Almost much like, like an, wasn't Animal Crossing like that. Animal Crossing is kind of like that where it's playing 24 seven, but also remember. Was it Sonic Adventure or Sonic Adventure Two, where you downloaded like a uh, the the Tamagotchi type thing onto the the Dreamcast memory card? Oh, uh, I jo- yeah, I don't remember which one it was. Chocobo, what they called? No, that's in Final Fantasy. Um, I don't I don't remember what they called it, but I know what you're talking. But that about. was another thing that was like that. But Pokemon was just more. It seemed like it, but you just kind of you capture them. You don't really have to worry about raising them too much. But it's just battle. That's all it is. Just battles and and. That's pretty much about it. But it's it's just it's strategy and it's, it's a pretty cool fun game even for 2016. It's not too bad. Mm. For 10 bucks you can't beat it. So. No, nope, very true. Um 
I uh, yeah, although I have way too many games that I need to play, so buying some now is definitely <laughs> ill-advised. Unless I go oh, back, you know, I like to right. do I like to do retro shopping though. If I ever like come across old video games, I have no pro- like at garage sales and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I have no problem buying them all. Um, actually, I just bought um, on my computer. If we're talking about retro games, how about a retro PC game? Um, retro PC game. Um, you know, I was never a big PC gamer. But Neither was I. Are we, are we going on too long? No, I was just giving you... Wow, okay. I was just giving you a heads up. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's just, just... That's okay. I know po- usually podcasts are like, I think, like... 15 or 20 minutes and we're just running our mouth no so. that's fine I'm the one with all the controls and the timer <laughs> alright well Again, no problem I'm, I, I, fourth okay. wall destroyed okay <laughs> yes because people who would listen to this don't realize <laughs> anyway but um, yeah retro PC games like th- there were only a handful of games I really really enjoyed but uh, I recently downloaded um, Theme Hospital which was one of my favorites oh, I remember um, that. yeah yeah, Theme Hospital was basically like it was like The Sims for in a hospital. So it's mm-hmm. like you took you built a hospital and you made sure the patients got taken care of and when you built a good enough hospital you moved on to the next stage. You know, it was kind of like in that roller coaster tycoon vein but for mm-hmm. hospitals. And it was actually super fun. Um and that also reminds me of probably two of my uh, well one of my favorite PC games ever, um Seventh Guest. Oh yes, was that the one with Which, the with the the Scissor Man villain or something like no, that? No, no, no. That was Clock Tower. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yes, no. Seven, seventh Guest was the one that it, it took place in a creepy mansion, and it was I think the first. I think it was one of the first games to use like full motion video. Oh, so you actually had cutscenes, so you would walk through this mansion and solve puzzles, and when you solved the puzzles, you would get a cutscene to find out what hap- what happened to the guests in this mansion. Oh wow, because um, they all died. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a very cool, you know, horror-based game. And in fact, they made a sequel called The Eleventh Hour, which wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. But then recently, a group of people, well, not recently, like ten, I want to say 10 years ago, uh, a super fan of the, of the original game wanted to make a sequel. He wanted to make a third game. So he started developing it for free um, in his spare time and then slowly got more people involved, more people involved, then actually reached out to the guys who created Seventh Guests. Mm-hmm. Um, got them on board, and then they did a Kickstarter earlier, uh, or either earlier this year or late last year, raised all the money, and now they're coming out with their their uh, part three. There you go. Yeah. So. All right. And and I have actually purchased that, so I'm just. Oh, did you? That oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, no, I would totally play that. game. So is it like considered a, an official third sequel or just a homebrew? No, it will be made. considered an official sequel because oh, okay, cool. they got the right they got the rights from the actual company, and in fact, they even hired. The original actor who played the oh, villain wow. in the first one. Oh, there you go. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's oh, actually really, again retro game coming back just from you know in this case just from fans. No, definitely. No, that's that's the beauty of Kickstarter. And there's a there's another site, not Indiegogo, but there's like another one specifically for video games. But but be that as it may, that's that's really a a big craze that's happening and probably something that we can definitely dive, dive into next time about like all these homebrews and stuff like that and, and all other conversation. Yeah, right. And um. But, uh, yeah, no, but otherwise, as far as systems, that's, that's what I'm worried about. Now that the summer's here, and a lot of um, flea markets out here on the island, and there are Retro old shopping. games. Yeah, no, honestly. And even though I don't have the systems, I'll buy them just to display the, the cart. You know, I have my, my E.T. I don't have an Atari, but I have mm-hmm. the E.T. cartridge. And the guy sold me for like two bucks, and I wasn't going to tell him that it was probably worth more. But, um, you know... I think that's what I'm going to be a little concerned about because that's probably where all my money is going to end up going. Yeah, well, you know what? I mean, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that as long as you enjoy it. No, know? true, but I also don't have any room. I mean, look at look at this. I'm, yeah, I'm, so I'm I, full, no, no so. I've, I've been to your I've been to your place, <laughs> and yes, you are out of room. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have plenty of room. There you go. So <laughs> I can load up at will. Perfect. And um, yeah, so do you have it? So you. What's going to be next for you to probably that you're going to play? I guess tonight you said you're going to play some Shining Force. <laughs> I have a feeling. I have a feeling Shining Force Two now is going in my Dope. system. So I'm going to pull out Arkham Asylum and once again go backwards. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I you know that's my appeal will always be retro games, despite how cool newer games are. I'll that's where my heart is. Hey, listen, that's you just said it. You know, whatever, whatever works for you, right? 
Yeah, and, of course, um, what I should be doing is I should be doing work, but... Well, you know. that's, that's for the rest of the days. You know, that's what the weekend's for. That's very true. The weekend when you panic. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and tonight I'll probably be either playing Pokemon or one of the other virtual games I may have on my whatever systems. So. Sounds like I'm you sure you don't want to, you know, you sure you don't want to play me in uh, like WWE 2K16? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it for PlayStation 4? No, I have it for Xbox One. Oh, okay then. <laughs> well, well, maybe 2K17 say. will work. I was just going to say, for 2K17, you better buy it for the Xbox One. Maybe I will. I've been using the Xbox a whole lot more, so... <laughs> well, you're going you're gonna to have to, because I'm going to make you. Fair enough. And with that, I think the Retro Gamers, we're back, and it looks like we're going to have a lot to talk about, and... Um Anthony, yeah, about 40 minutes worth every time. Too. Well, maybe, you know, we'll see what the people have to say. But be that as it may, I'm Larry. And I'm Anthony. And thank you for joining us for the Retro Gamers, and we'll catch you all next time. See ya. See ya.